Hello, today we're gonna get ready together while I answer your questions. You guys left these for me on Instagram and on YouTube, I asked you on both, and today we're gonna answer them. Honestly, let's just jump right into it. Okay, I'm thinking let's start off with this. If you watched my recent Shop My Stash, I mentioned that I just threw this in. This is the Maracuja Tinted Hydrator from Tarte. This is one of the like 50 different foundations that they make, but I have the shade 20N Light Neutral, so. Gonna start with this. Actually, such a gloomy day right now. And I just did my hair and like did like a blowout, washed it, everything. Cause it wasn't supposed to rain today and then it just started raining out of nowhere. And I'm like, why? But okay, first question, how long? Actually, this one I was asked, I think twice. So I definitely wanted to include this one. It was how long did it take you to fully understand the New York subway system? So if you're new here, I've lived in New York City for going on two years now, which is nuts. I mean, it's not quite two years, but I did just get my lease renewal for what will be the start of my third year in New York City, which is absolutely bananas to think about. And then someone else asked like, was it hard to figure out the transportation or like the Metro system? And I would say it's one of those things where it's hard initially if you're not used to taking public transit, which I wasn't super familiar with. The only other time in my life that I've really relied on public transportation was when I was in college, I would take the bus sometimes. I went to Michigan State and so I walked most places, but like sometimes for farther distances, I would take the bus. And I will say, I think technology has made riding public transportation a lot more straightforward. Like you really don't need to know much about the subway and like the route that it takes if you have your phone, because if you're typing your destination into Google Maps or Apple Maps or whatever you use, you can switch from a driving route over to a public transportation route and it will tell you what train to take, where to enter, where to get off, where to transfer if you need to transfer. So I don't feel like it was ever that challenging. I would say the biggest struggle that I ran into was having to learn the directions because the thing about the subway, it goes two different directions, you know, like a highway. It goes north and south or west and east or whatever direction it's going. So you have to enter on the correct side to go the direction that you are trying to go. And if you're not really used to doing that, it's easy to enter through the wrong side. And there are definitely, I remember the first time that like I had just moved here probably the day before and my friend that helped me move, we wanted to go do some exploring and we get on the train and we went the wrong direction, ended up where we were not trying to go. But I do feel like now, not only do I feel like I, I know where the different lines go, I know like what train I would need to take to get somewhere. And I will say that it probably wasn't even until somewhat recently, I would say it was probably like a good year in before I could start going somewhere without needing to look it up on a map. And I guess if it's somewhere I've never been before, like once I get off the train, I would need the directions on the map to know like where to go. But I would say it was like, it has been relatively recently where I could be somewhere and then think, okay, well I need to get home and then I would know how to get home without having to look it up. Like I would know, okay, well, this train will take me to here and I could transfer to this or whatever I would need to do. I was also asked, how do I deal with city noise at night when I'm trying to sleep? Um, and she said, one thing I missed about living in my old rural town was being able to fall asleep to the sounds of frogs and crickets. In my suburb, I can hear trains, sirens, all that stuff. So let's go in with bronzer. This is from LYS. Honestly, I will say it takes some adjusting. I still like, this morning, for example, there were, there must have been like some construction or maybe even an accident that happened nearby because there were just so many cars honking their horns this morning at seven and it woke me up and I mean, it was fine. I was going to be getting up around that time anyways, but I will say I, I personally am a pretty light sleeper, so I don't feel like I've adjusted to that. I know some people say like, oh, you know, you get used to it. I don't know that I ever will. I'm a very light sleeper. But what I do is I turn my fan on when I sleep. I really can't sleep without a fan anyways. Now, even like when I go home to Michigan, I can't really sleep because I'm like, it's too silent. I need some noise. So I sleep with a fan. My roommate sleeps with earplugs in. And I guess it's, it really depends where in New York City you're at. I would say there are definitely going to be areas that are quieter than others, but yeah, I sleep with a fan to drown out the noise and I kind of, I've considered getting like a noisemaker or, or like a white noise machine, whatever you want to call it. Okay. This one I thought was really interesting because I've had a lot of people talking about this. She said, 
Not really a question for a Q&A, but I think Natasha Denona is leaving Sephora. Everything is extremely discounted. So I've had a lot of subscribers mentioning this, and I... I don't think it's all Sephora's. From what I was gathering, it sounds like Natasha Nona might be leaving Sephora Canada. Let me know. Let me know if you're seeing this in your stores. I haven't seen any Natasha Denona products um, on sale. I wish they were, but I. it sounds like they might be leaving Sephora Canada, which would be such a bummer and honestly kind of surprising. Uh, I know that they just came into Ulta, but I know Canada doesn't have Ulta, though wasn't Canada supposed to get Ulta a few years ago? So maybe one day, maybe one day, but I'm not sure what's going on with Natasha Denona. I will have to look more into that, but I've definitely heard a lot of people mentioning that. I was also asked, what's my favorite affordable skincare staple that I use constantly? And... Oh, and she also said, I'm discovering the brands that my Durham started me on are getting really expensive. So I first wanted to just talk in general about drugstore skincare brands that I have really enjoyed because I feel like, don't get me wrong, I've got a lot of high-end favorites in my skincare routine, but I also don't think you need to spend a ton to get really great results from your skincare. And I also feel like there are categories that you can easily save some money on. Like I don't think you need to spend a ton on a cleanser or even a moisturizer. I would, if you're going to splurge somewhere, I feel like um, products that have actives in them are maybe a better place to be splurging. But my favorite affordable brands, obviously I really love The Ordinary. I, I will say every brand that I'm about to mention really came because of the ordinary like i feel that so much of the drugstore skincare that we have now or i guess even just affordable skincare because not all of these are sold in drugstores is because the ordinary like the ordinary walked so all of these brands could run and i know that other affordable skincare brands existed before this but most of our newer hyped up affordable skincare brands have modeled themselves after that brand so we got to give it to the ordinary but i also would say i love good molecules similar like similar products truly i also really love bioma and they're available at target these brands are all at ulta beauty i'm pretty sure also peach slices that is the drugstore or like slightly more affordable sister brand to peach and lily they they have like kind of a different focus with that brand. A lot of things are like acne centered, which is why I love it because I struggle with acne. I have been talking about their Azelaic Acid Serum. Let me grab it. Okay, I mentioned this honestly in a couple of videos last week, so I won't go on and on about it, but I love that product. Um, I do also like skincare from e.l.f. I, I love the Bioma like moisturizers. Don't get me wrong. I love high-end skincare products too, but I feel like you can have good skin at any price point. Okay, this one I thought was interesting and I kind of, oops i dropped something but i kind of wanted to touch on this because i feel like this is a little bit of a misconception but i was asked how common it is for a brand to pay someone to bash another brand and yeah you guys it's like full-on raining right now i'm so bummed i just did my hair and then i have to leave for an appointment in a bit and i'm like wow i'm about to go walk in the rain and i mean you can't see my hair on camera but it was looking cute um we're gonna use persona georgia but I think this comment came from, was it the Bi Sister drama? I don't know. One of the drama get ins a few years ago. I remember we were starting to hear people say that brands will pay influencers to bash another brand. And I feel like I've heard that narrative so much ever since that was announced, whenever it was a few years ago. And I will say, I'm obviously just one person, so I can't speak to anything that has ever happened in this influencer bubble, but I have never heard of anything like that happening. Like, I would venture to say that that is not true, though, like I said, I don't know. Just because it hasn't happened to me and I've never heard it happening to anyone else doesn't mean it, it's not true, but I, I think that seems a bit far-fetched that a brand would pay someone to negatively speak about a brand. What I would say is more likely and what actually does happen is that a brand would pay you to not speak about another brand. But that's not, I don't know. Let me explain what I mean by that. So most contracts are written with, well, not most actually, some are written with exclusivity. So what they'll say is, um, 
I've never worked with this brand, but I would love to. Hey, if you're watching, I love you, but this is Essence. So let's say I was doing a sponsorship with Essence and the sponsorship was going up tomorrow. They could put in a clause for exclusivity in the contract saying five days before the video goes live and five days after the video goes live, you cannot partner with X, Y, and Z brand. And this would all be negotiated between the brand and the influencer in terms of like how long that exclusivity would last for. The longest I've heard is like 30 days, but even then, if, if I was getting a contract that said that, I would try to push it down or do less. It's not saying you can't love that brand or work with them. It's just saying, hey, within these days, I don't want you posting about anything else because we want this partnership to shine. I couldn't do this Essence video and then the next day, have a sponsorship with e.l.f., you know? Okay, this next one is dating related. I feel like I get a lot of dating related questions and I know a lot of you have shared with me that you're around my age and single or dating. I'm 29, I'll be 30 this year. And I was asked how to not get discouraged when dating. And I think this can be tough. I get comments kind of similar to this pretty often. By the way, we're gonna go in with a little bit of highlight. This is REM. I hate the name of this. It's called Miss Uranus, but I'm just gonna dust like a little bit of this kind of over the blush. But I know it can be harder when you're in your late 20s, early 30s, really any age, but when you're at an age where a lot of your peers and close friends are married, are in serious relationships, are maybe, if they're not married, maybe they're getting engaged, maybe they're having kids or trying to have kids. I definitely recognize that there can be a lot of pressure through that. And I think that some of that societal pressure also makes, can make dating feel kind of discouraging if things aren't going well and you're not meeting someone and you're maybe not having good connections. And I've definitely felt like that before. I recently went on the, the like first date I've been on in a really long time, but it was like the worst date ever, you guys. Like I've debated if I do like a chatty get ready with me, like story time, worst date ever. It was like comically bad. And I feel like it's easy afterwards to think like, to feel discouraged. I think that's a natural reaction. But what I would say is that when it comes to dating and when it comes to pretty much anything in life, I like keeping the mindset of like, you're only looking for one anyways, so it's okay if not everything's gonna go well. And I remember kind of having this mindset when we were apartment hunting last year. It's so hard to find an apartment in New York City. It is so stressful. It's practically like a part-time job in itself. And we were just seeing so many duds that, you know, I'm getting in my head, like, I don't like any of these apartments. I, it's so hard to find one that has what I'm looking for that's in my budget, blah, 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 blah. But I had to shift my mindset to that doesn't really matter because I'm only looking for one apartment anyways. I can only move into one apartment. And trust me, this is, this is gonna apply to dating in a minute, but it's like, I don't need every apartment to be my perfect apartment because I'm only looking for one of them. So I'm looking for one that is as close to what I'm looking for as possible. But if almost nothing is, that's okay because I'm not gonna move into all like 10 that I'm touring. I'm only moving into one of them. And wait, wait, I'll get, I'll get to, the, to the metaphor here in a second, but we're gonna go in with wild greens. I wanna do a green eyeshadow look today, but it's gonna be like a really subtle green. So let's, I think my, maybe just one shade, the shade Kale. I'm gonna try just putting that all over the lid and see if I like it. That's kind of my vision. But it's the same thing when you're dating. You're just looking for one person. So it, doesn't really matter if a lot of people aren't your standard. Like if you're saying, you know, it's so hard to find someone that fits the qualities that I'm looking for. Well, good, because what you're looking for, you're allowed to be picky. And you don't need every single person to be a perfect match to what you're looking for because you're only looking for one person. Okay, I'm trying to decide if I want, I like this is like such a subtle little wash of green and I, I know that I could build it up, but I'm trying to decide if I kind of like just this simple mossy look or if I want to add some more pigment. I think also you're, I promise you're going to be happier not being with someone than you are if when you settle and you're with someone who doesn't meet 
what you're looking for and what you need from a partner. But I think that mindset can apply to so many things, whether it's dating, whether it's apartment hunting, whether you're looking for a new job, whether any any aspect of your life, it's like, you know, right now you're just looking for one. So not every single one should be your perfect match. Like it makes sense that not everything is going to be 100% what you're looking for. I'm going to add just a little bit of brown to the lash line just so that I can add a little bit of a shadow. Maybe make a wing out of this. We'll see. I was asked when I look back at my first years on YouTube, do I see how I've changed personality wise? Which is so interesting because I do, I've been on YouTube for like six, maybe almost seven years at this point. So I mean, it makes sense. So much of my life has changed. Of course, like things are going to look different, but it's interesting for me to like watch some of my older videos. Cause I feel like even my voice sounds really different, which I mean, naturally your voice is gonna change. So I'm sure that's part of it. But I, I feel like I spoke a lot quieter in my videos before like this and I don't know. Sometimes I watch them back and I'm like, oh, my voice sounded cuter there. Now I like, I don't know. I think sometimes watching back my older videos, I can cringe because I just look like a little bit awkward and nervous on camera. And I think that's super common. I mean, anyone starting in social media, it takes a while to feel comfortable in front of a camera. Okay, I'm adding a little bit of the Level Up Mascara from ColourPop. This is the brown one. I do like this. I don't think I'm gonna do too, too much of this mascara. I actually wish they would come out with this in more shades, cause oops, I got some on my lid. But I know they have their other mascara, I think it's called the BFF mascara, in a ton of colors. I wish they would launch this in more of like a maroon or even a green. I think that would be so pretty. Even a blue. I want to see more brands do colorful mascara this year. And I do I do feel like we're starting to see more brown mascaras, which I love. And with that, I want to see like a few other colors. And it doesn't have to be like a bright, bold green or blue, but just maybe even a little bit of a blue undertone. I think that would be so much fun. Okay, I feel like I'm not super obsessed with the makeup today, but let's go on to the next question. And I was asked if I had to choose five coffee shops in New York, what are they? I figured I got this question because of my coffee shop spreadsheet. If you're new here, I do have a spreadsheet. I always get asked to like share this. I don't think I'll probably ever share, but I do like sharing like recommendations, but I just like keeping track of places I've been. I like being able to like have recommendations for people. If someone says, hey, I'm in this neighborhood, where should I go get coffee? I like being able to reference something. So whenever I go to a new coffee shop, I score it on my spreadsheet. And right now I have been to over 80 coffee shops in New York City, which is really wild because it sounds like so many. You're like, oh my gosh, that's gotta be all of them. Well, not, not really, but it's not even close. There are like literally thousands. So I, I feel like I'm really just skimming the service here. And I also feel like I've been to so many but my top five that's really hard for lips i think i'm gonna start with lip liner lately i've kind of been into just lip liner and like maybe a gloss on top this one i've been wearing a lot this is from essence this is kind of newer this is their eight hour matte comfort liner it's like the reformulated version of the one that i used to love but what is this shade called oh soft beige it is like the exact same color as my lips so because that i feel like i don't know if everyone would like this shade because i think it would be too light for a lot of people even for me, sometimes I'm like, can you even see anything? But it's kind of nice because you can just outline your lips. But okay, my top five. My favorite one right now, there's a Devotion, which they have a few locations, but the best one in my opinion is their location in Dumbo. There's good seating, the lighting is beautiful, the coffee is good, the vibes are great. I also, this one is like a little more touristy, but I don't care. I love 10,000 Coffee. They have a few locations. There's a couple in Midtown, there's one in Fideye, and, oh, did this? <laughs> they have like very unique drinks, so I would, I would try there if you want something like fun and a little bit funky. I also love variety. They have a few locations. Also, my favorite one is the Chelsea location. Frame on the Upper East Side is also really, really cute. It's like themed after photography. How many was that? I think that was four. Did I say four or was it three? That was four. I need one more. 
There's this really cute spot in Cobble Hill in Brooklyn called Octavia Coffee. It's definitely small and intimate, but I love the vibes. I felt like I was in like a rom-com. That's tough though, because I just have so many favorites. I, I feel like it really depends on the week. But thank you for getting ready with me today. Thank you for leaving your questions. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will go ahead and see you in my next one. Bye.